You are listening to Profit Without Worry, episode number 96. Today we're talking about an important part of Profit Without Worry that's often overlooked. And it's really important because it can make or break your business long term. Hey there, I'm Michelle Evans, and this is the show where coaches, experts, and business owners like us get real about what it takes to create a profitable online business. I can tell you from experience that nonstop hustle plus random acts of marketing do not equal success. So how do we attract a steady flow of clients and sales without all the hustle? This is the Profit Without Worry podcast. Well, hello there and welcome back. Thank you for tuning in today. Can you believe we're already into September? There's only about 90-ish days until we're into a new year. How are you doing with your 2019 goals? Has this been a year of growth? And not just business revenue growth, but also personally, professionally, you know, have you grown in the ways you wanted to? What are you committing to do differently the last three months of the year to have a great year that you're really, really proud of? These are all great questions to ask as we hit this month and zoom into the end of the year because 2020 will be here before we know it. And hey, have you taken the time to subscribe to the show so that you never miss an episode? If not, it's so easy to do. You can go to your podcast app of choice or directly to the website at profitwithoutworry.com and get the uh, free download, uh, Five Steps to Profit Without Worry, and you'll get notifications every single week. And I'd love to connect with you. It's really easy to do. You can email me, michelle at michellelevans.com, or just hit me up on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram. Tag me and use the hashtag Profit Without Worry so that I see your message. Ask a question, leave a comment, or just say hi. I love to put a face with your name to know who's tuning in each and every week. All right, let's dive into today's show. I want to start off with a question. How do you serve potential clients from day one, even before they've ever bought from you? How do you create a customer experience that makes people want to not only buy from you, but tell others how amazing you've been and maybe buy from you again and again? Last week in episode number 95, we talked all about the customer journey. And if you haven't listened to that episode, I highly suggest you listen to it as well because the customer journey and the customer experience really go hand in hand. And if you're not paying attention to the customer journey that you are creating in your business, you really should. Adobe and e-consultancy, two really big companies who focus on research and understanding sort of the trends that are happening out there, They released the Digital Marketing Trends Report, and it showed that the number one most exciting opportunity for businesses in 2019 and 2020 is improving their customer experience because it has such a big impact on their growth and sustainability and just everything. This is worth paying attention to, my friend, because the name of the game in our always on buy anything at the touch of a button culture is about creating an experience that people will remember and talk about in a good way. You may have heard this term tossed around and thought it only applied to giant behemoth businesses, but you're wrong. In fact, you and I as smaller businesses, we have a big advantage over the giant guys because we can create amazing experiences for our audience without having to coordinate a ton of people and, you know, just all the logistics that go with having a big company. We just need to decide to make it a priority and be really intentional about it. First things first though, what the heck is customer experience? Well, the customer experience, it can actually include a ton of things, but the bottom line is this, your customer's experience is your brand. You can have the fanciest website out there, the best photo shoot, the most gorgeous Instagram feed. You can have everything branding wise, but if you have a crappy delivery experience or a crappy experience when people interact with you or buy from you, you've got a crappy brand. It doesn't matter how fancy it looks. I will never forget the time when I bought into that mastermind in 2015 that was $30,000 for the year. 
as a free gift for buying into the mastermind, I was invited to, um, to attend an event that this company was putting on and it had about 700 employees during the event. This company was selling a whole slew of products and services from the stage. It was like a three day pitch fest. It was awful and irritating, but one program that they were pushing really hard at this event was a $13,000, like um, get started in the online business world. It was to take you from zero or from just starting out and having an online business to 500,000 in revenue. And as a bonus for buying it during the event, this company had a special lunch with speakers and all sorts of like bonusy things behind the scene, bonusy things that people would get for buying this $13,000 program. Well, I bought a program that was a couple steps up from this thing and I was going to spend more than twice as much. And well, I'll tell you in just a minute because the thing is, is that this company was pushing this so hard and they were going over the top, talking about all these great things you'd get if you bought into this program, but you had to buy now. If you've never been to one of these events, it is so irritating. It is designed to get your adrenaline rushing to, to really, you know, prey on the fear of missing out. It was one of those high pressure tactics to get people sitting in on the fence to make a decision. Well, you know, I'm sitting there going, hello, I already committed to $30,000. And this program is a couple steps down from where I was. I was in the mastermind. And, you know, since I was already in the mastermind, I simply asked, say, hey, I've already signed up to be in this mastermind. Can I just attend this luncheon too? Because it sounds amazing. And I was told, no. Right then and there, I was not so excited about buying into that mastermind. It was a terrible customer experience. I felt left out. I mean, I'm not going to buy both programs. I felt disrespected and I felt like I'd wasted my time coming to this pitch fest quote unquote event only to be excluded from the luncheon because I had already purchased something past what they were selling. It didn't set the stage well for how I felt about this company moving forward. And honestly, it was just one of many bad customer experiences I had with them. And I'd never, ever buy from them again. I'd never recommend them. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff, but that was in 2015. So fast forward to now. And just this past week, I saw an, a, a, um, a Facebook ad from this coach whose company that did that to me in 2015. And I saw that they've completely rebranded. She has come up with a whole new company name, um, a whole new brand, a whole new look and feel. And you know why? Because I'm not the only one that had a terrible um, customer experience. And, you know, the customer experience didn't stop there. Like they made promises that they didn't deliver on. They took a lot of people's money. You know, she would be up on stage telling people to sell their car to pay for her program. Like there's just a lot of stuff, right? And they had a terrible track record of bad customer experience, not delivering on what they said they would deliver on and basically scamming people, right? And the word got around not to buy from them, including complaints with the Better Business Bureau in most states in the US, and I think even some from uh, overseas. But, you know, that's on one end of bad customer experience is that, you know, you push, push, push to get people to buy and then you totally don't deliver. At the other end is an amazing customer experience. And, you know, I want you to just think for a moment of your favorite buying experience. It could be coffee. It could be a local nursery. It could be, um, I don't know, car buying. It could be any number of things, right? I want you to think of one of your favorite buying experiences ever. Mine is a local high-end salon and spa called Jean Juarez. I love this place. I've been going there since I could afford it when I got my first job out of college. And like, I'd have to save up to be able to go. When you check in to Jean Juarez, you get a robe. They ask if you'd like water, tea, or coffee. The lobby's wonderful. It's really spacious. You can, you know, sit down. You're not like on a tiny little chair and squished. The stylists are all highly trained and focused just on specific things. So people who cut hair only cut hair. People who do color only do color. People who give massages, you know, like, you know, they're really focused and they have to go through 
um, a whole, after they get their, um, beautician or cosmetology license, I get, I don't, what is the license for, a somebody who does hair. But anyway, after they go through that, they have to go through advanced training for Jean Juarez. So everybody is highly trained. They're amazing. They're always on trend. And, you know, when you go into a spa for um, a pedicure or a massage or a facial or whatever, you are in a different realm. It's away from the uh, main salon. It's quiet. In a lot of the salons that are in a lot of the spas, they have, you know, a, a water feature. It's, you get your own um, attendant. I mean, it's just amazing. I love to go to this place. And, um, and you can, <laughs> one of my favorite things is after you get a spa service, you can use their shower facilities and their showers are to die for. They're huge. They have one of those huge rain, um, uh, shower heads, you know, overhead. And then they have these wall shower heads. It's just like the best experience. I love it. I know it sounds funny, but it's just like one of those me time, you know, taking care of me things. And I've been a loyal customer there for probably 25 years. And yeah, I've had the odd time or two where my visit didn't go as well as I'd hoped or it didn't live up to my um, expected customer experience. But honestly, the goodwill that they've built up over my 25 years of going there it has overshadowed those few bad experiences that I've had. So I forgive and I move on and I keep coming back. And I have no idea how much money I've spent over that 25 years, but I can tell you it's a lot. And what about you? I mean, do you have a place that you've been going to for years and years and years that you love and they deliver an amazing experience every time? Or maybe you just found them and you know that you're going to be there forever because you just love how they treat you. What makes them amazing to you? How does it make you feel when you come in there? Uh, like there's a local sandwich shop here that I recently discovered and I've been there maybe like five or six times. And by the third time I walked in, the owner was like, hey, Michelle, it's so great to see you. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is like the third time I've been in here. And I have to tell you, whenever I want to get a little sandwich at lunch, I'm going to go there. The owner made me feel so welcomed and like he was actually happy to see me. And it's just, you know, those little things that can make a big difference. How much do you think it adds to that sandwich shop's bottom line or Jean Juarez's bottom line or your favorite shopping experience's bottom line to deliver a wonderful experience time and time again? I mean, you know, I talk about Amazon all the time. I love them. I love that I can order stuff, you know, at 11 o'clock at night in my pajamas. And by the next day, it's on my doorstep. Like that, having that experience over and over again is amazing. And I'm here to tell you that delivering a great customer experience is hugely important for your business, for my business, for any business out there. In fact, with today's environment where you can see bad reviews, literally at your fingertips, I'd say that delivering a great customer experience is one of the most important things to building a long-term sustainable business. The better experience that customers have, the more repeat customers and positive reviews you'll receive. And you'll also reduce the frustration from customer complaints and refunds. And it really starts with setting the right expectation, right? Make promises, deliver on those promises. Don't make promises that you're not gonna keep, right? And the benefit of focusing on delivering great customer experience includes, you know, having better customer loyalty, increased customer satisfaction. So, you know, people are coming back again and again, they're really happy with what you do, and they tell others, better word of mouth, positive reviews, people willing to give you a recommendation. Like, these are all mission critical to, creating profit without worry in your business. You've got to have people who come back and buy from you again and again. You've got to have people who are happy with what you've delivered and are happy to help you tell others that they're happy. And, you know, on the other hand, like that coach who led my high-end mastermind, yeah, she got $30,000 from me and from 24 other people. Plus, I have no idea how many people bought that $13,000 program, but a lot. But in the end, you know, she might've made a lot of profit, but nobody was happy or very few people were happy 
because she wasn't delivering a great customer experience. So she had the exact opposite. She had no customer loyalty. She had big refunds and people who refused to pay their contracts. And she had really bad reviews and very, very few recommendations. In fact, I remember in the mastermind, she was like trying to bribe people to provide recommendations and even then people wouldn't do it. So what can you do to ensure that you've got a great customer experience? Well, there is no one single checklist to follow to guarantee a good customer experience that you know, your business is unique, my business is unique, and our buyers are unique to us. But there are a lot of things that we can learn by looking at our own experiences, what we personally value, what we want to deliver, and also look at the data across different businesses out there. Hotjar, which you know does a lot of um, website stuff, did a survey of 2,000 customer experience professionals and I'll link to that in today's show notes, but here are some of the key takeaways from that survey. First, you know, say these customer experience professionals, they say, just make listening to customers a top priority in your business. It's as simple as asking questions, listening to feedback, and even proactively going out to find what people are saying about you. Number two, use customer feedback to develop an in-depth understanding of what your customers are expecting from you, what they feel like you're delivering, what they're delighted with, maybe what they're not as satisfied with. When you understand your buyers, you're going to understand what they need to feel supported and engaged in your customer experience and really deliver something that they're like, yeah, This is exactly what I wanted, or this is better than what I wanted. And then number three, implement a system to help you collect feedback, to analyze it, and to act on it regularly. You know, surveys. So you can use, you know, Google Forms to do surveys. You can do SurveyMonkey. You can send out an email and just say, hey, you know, answer these couple of questions. You can even just ask for feedback on social media. It doesn't have to be difficult. And the list goes on and on. Just pick one or two and implement them so that you can start listening. Bottom line, this is not rocket science. In fact, it's kind of back to the golden rule that we learned in, I don't know, preschool or kindergarten. Treat others how you want to be treated. Good customer experiences come from asking your audience questions, listening to their responses, and then making sure that you're delivering on what you promise and taking action on the feedback that they give you in a way that makes them feel included, supported, and valued. So what are you going to do to give your audience a voice in your business? And what company or companies out there are doing an amazing job at delivering you a customer experience that makes you feel valued? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Hit me up on social media or email me, michelle at michellelevans.com. And as you were listening to this, did you think of someone who could use these insights about creating profit without worry in their business? If you can think of someone who could use this, would you do both of us a big favor and share this episode with them? It's easy to do from whatever podcasting app you're listening on, or just share the website for today's show, which is profitwithoutworry.com forward slash episode dash 96. And your friend can listen right there on their computer or tablet or phone or whatever. And don't forget to download your freebie, five steps to profit without worry. You can get that at today's show notes or profitwithoutworry.com forward slash free so that you can see exactly what it takes to create a movement with your marketing. All right, have an amazing week and I'll see you back here next week, same time, same place on another great episode of Profit Without Worry. I'll see you then. 